SpaceX's Starship, the most powerful rocket ever to fly, exploded on April 20th, 2023, shortly after leaving the launch pad over the Gulf of Mexico. Was this an embarrassing failure or one of the most impressive successes in the history of spaceflight? Now, I'm going to tell you all about that today, why this is so important, and why you should keep your eye on space like I'm doing. I'm Luke, and this is Plymouthy. Rome wasn't built in a day at the time of recording. This is the birthday of Rome, the 21st of April. And you can see my short documentary in Latin on Scorpio Martianus all about that momentous event. But what we're seeing going on now with SpaceX and other private rocket companies in conjunction with national space rocketry around the world is a new revolution, the building of the new civilization of humanity that's going to colonize our entire solar system. And SpaceX is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, literally with this SpaceX heavy lift vehicle called Starship. SpaceX has earned quite a few accolades for being the first aerospace program to actually re-land boosters that have taken objects into orbit. SpaceX has done this with their amazing 70 meter tall Falcon 9 rocket. It has two stages, the upper stage, or the second stage, that carries the payload to orbit, which could be satellites or cargo up to 17 tons, as well as astronauts, crew to the International Space Station. And that second stage burns up in the atmosphere like virtually every other rocket in history. But the second stage does something truly magnificent. It lands itself autonomously on its flamey end at a precise landing location on land or at sea on a drone ship. Now, before SpaceX and the Falcon 9, the cost to send anything to space was about ten dollars to $20,000 per kilogram. But that's because they had to throw away the whole rocket at every launch. Imagine if you had to throw away a whole 747 every time you cross the Atlantic. Since Falcon 9 successfully landed for the first time in December 2015 and proved the reusability of an orbital class first stage, it slashed that cost down to just $2,000 a kilogram to orbit, one-tenth of what it was before. To date, 186 Falcon 9 first stages have successfully landed of 197 attempts and 158 of 163 of the final Block 5 version, giving it a 96.9% .9 success rate for something that was once deemed technically impossible. Now what this has done, being able to reuse so much of the launch vehicle, the booster, which is something that was thought absolutely impossible to reuse, especially through the execution of precision landings, no one thought that was possible. That is nothing compared to what SpaceX is really all about. The goal of SpaceX is the colonization of Mars and eventually other planets in the solar system to make the human species multi-planetary. This is something that I feel very strongly about and have been a strong advocate for my whole life. So to see SpaceX take on a mission like that has been truly inspiring. Now the beautiful Falcon 9 is not designed to do anything but to take people and cargo to orbit. It is not designed to colonize Mars. That's what Starship is for. The system that's now called Starship, with the super heavy booster being the first stage, is a system that avid onlookers like me have been just delighted in watching going through the prototyping stages over the past few years. The Starship spacecraft and its super heavy booster are designed to carry up to 100 people on interplanetary missions, as well as 150 tons of cargo and it is 100% reusable. The full stack is 120 meters tall, and it is the largest and most powerful rocket that has ever flown. Here's what it looks like to scale with the largest commercial airliner, the Airbus 380. Now this is how it works. After carrying the Starship spacecraft to the desired altitude, the first stage super heavy booster detaches and flies back to the launch point, something like the Falcon 9, and the tower with these huge mechanical arms catches the booster. The Starship spacecraft docks for refueling in low Earth orbit and then flies to the moon, Mars, or other planets where it lands with pinpoint accuracy. Or at least that's the plan. 
Yesterday, we saw the first flight test of the full system, and the flight plan was simply to launch the whole rocket, return the booster to a precise point over the Gulf of Mexico near the launch site where it would ditch in the water and naturally wouldn't be reusable. This is just a prototype to see if they could do this much. Starship, meanwhile, would continue on a nearly orbital flight, re-entering the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii, where it would also do a controlled ditch in the ocean and naturally not be recovered. The point is to collect as much data as possible about these important phases of flight. Now, this is just a brief summary, so if you're curious to know more about Starship, please ask in the comments. And avid space enthusiasts like myself have just been waiting for the day to see Starship launch, not just doing a hop for a few kilometers, but to actually go into space. And that happened yesterday on the 20th of April. The first launch attempt was scrubbed. That was on Monday the 17th, which may have disappointed new onlookers. But if you've watched these kinds of launches of prototype vehicles before, then you know this is very normal. It's normal for them to scrub the first one because the pressure and the tanks isn't just right or something else within the system automatically triggers a hold and then a scrub of the launch. But it did go up finally. I was actually pretty shocked. <laughs> In fact, I think everyone was shocked because they put a hold on the countdown since things weren't quite right and they wanted to make sure they were right. And then, as we were all around the world, millions of us watching live, we expected to see another countdown. But there wasn't. Suddenly, like a candle, it just lifted off. And it was absolutely amazing. Thank goodness my eyes were still glued to the screen and I was able to see it happen before my eyes in real time because I've been waiting for years to see this and man it was exciting not only because it launched without exploding on the pad but then at an altitude of about 39 kilometers started to lose control it seems that some of the engines which are also a prototype failed during ascent and this may have been the reason that the whole vehicle which is by the way larger than a Saturn V rocket tumbling out of control. Now, all kinds of weird, crazy things have happened in aerospace history, but people have never been able to see it live, such as the blessing of our modern technology and the fact that SpaceX's experimental test site at Boca Chica in Texas is on a public road so individual people can take photos and do live streams that the whole world got to see this happening. SpaceX embraces this a lot. They show the brutal, ugly side of engineering, which is sometimes there are RUDs, rapid, unscheduled disassemblies. And such a rapid, unscheduled disassembly occurred before our very eyes, and it was absolutely beautiful to behold. And I want to emphasize, as someone who is really enthusiastic about the mission of SpaceX, and like so many millions of others around the world, is just so excited about their success, why would I be so gleeful about this? Well, that's because this mission is a prototype to see if these things can fly. That booster had never flown before. That was the very first time. And the Starship, the orbiter part, that had only gone up and down on hops. It only made one successful landing. So these are completely new experimental technologies. There are essentially three levels of success to the mission that happened yesterday. The first level of success would be successfully launching off of the pad and not exploding on the pad because the pad and the system that actually holds that whole booster is much more complex than other launch pads for rockets have been in the past. This system, as we've seen, will actually be able to catch the booster. That'll be unbelievable when that happens for the first time, if they can pull it off. So if it had exploded on the pad, I would have considered that definitely a disappointment, even a failure in my book. But the fact that it got off the pad, that means that at SpaceX, they're collecting data as it's flying, seeing how all of these 30 engines are working together in concert to launch this unbelievably large rocket. They're going to be able to perfect this system in the coming months and years. The second level of success would have been getting through Max-Q and actually having a successful separation of the Starship from the booster so that the booster can attempt a boost back burn and that the Starship could continue on into orbit. And the planned objective for the mission, which they're going to have to repeat in the near future, would have been successfully bringing the booster back to the place where it was going to ditch and crash and be lost in the ocean. That was always the plan, but to do it in a controlled fashion in a specific location to test the navigation and energy reserves of the booster systems. And for the orbiter to make it all the way to the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii, where it was also going to 
crash land. So this thing was always going to crash. It was always going to be non-recoverable. And if any of those three levels of success were achieved, I would have been happy, and I was. It got off the pad without destroying it, which means after analyzing what may have gone wrong yesterday and making necessary adjustments to the next booster and starship, they'll be able to launch again in the coming weeks and months. If they had lost the tower in the pad, that would have been truly disastrous and it could have set them back by many months. So they achieved what I consider to be level one of success. SpaceX is very happy as well. It was a spectacular show for everybody that got to watch it live. And I almost forgot to mention that the final explosion at the end was in fact deliberate. That's right. When it was no longer able to keep the correct flight plan, it was destroyed manually with the flight termination system. And you should definitely go and see the full videos of it from all the angles, from all of the wonderful YouTube channels that are covering this stuff in detail. And that said, what I'm going to do in a future video is tell you what channels there are, what YouTube channels you can learn so much from about space, space exploration, aeronautical engineering, rocketry, far more than I could ever hope to cover myself. So stay tuned for that. We are lucky enough to live in this time, standing on the shores of a vast celestial ocean, much as Carl Sagan once said. And just as the birthday of Rome is remembered as a significant date in the development of civilization, so too will the 20th of April 2023 be remembered as one of those great moments in history as the human race continued its journey towards the stars. Thanks so much for watching. Walete. Far more than I, far more than I could ever. <laughs>